weddings have changed. They're different now. So we're talking about the new way to wed. What you need to know, what you can do, some DIY tips, the benefits, and how to keep your wedding safe. I'm bringing in some experts in their fields to help expand on these topics and provide additional planning tips around virtual, hybrid, micro, and in-person COVID weddings. Today, we're talking with the lovely folks at Cajun Aquarium. Hi there, I'm Jamie Chang, your destination wedding planning guru and designer of joy at Mango Muse Events, the creator of Passport to Joy, the step-by-step -step online wedding planning course for couples, and the founder of Let's I Do This, intimate and virtual weddings in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I share real and honest and useful wedding planning tips, tricks, and advice you can use to help make planning your wedding easier and more joyful so you can create a wedding you love. Because let's face it, wedding planning isn't always very easy. In fact, it can be downright painful and nobody wants that. So we're bringing the joy back to wedding planning. Are you ready? All right, so let's do this. Let's dive in in here. Now, today we're doing something a little different and we're having a fun conversation with some fun friends about the new way to wed, about these alternative weddings, about COVID weddings. And today we're talking with Tyler and Shelly from Cajun Aquarium. Cajun Aquarium is a unique DJ and photography company who has been an industry leader for over 15 years. They specialize in turntable and vinyl DJing combined with the newest technology, giving your event an authentic music experience. And their photographers are able to combine natural portraiture with a creative documentary style to tell a unique story for each couple. Known for their intimate and customized process, they pair clients with the absolute perfect DJ and photographer for their special day. And now with their new Be There virtual event experience, they can use their DJ and MC skills and technology to connect people in these strange times. Let's dive in. So, hello, welcome Tyler and Shelly. We're so excited to have you here and just chat about weddings. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, thanks for having us. So excited, so excited. Okay, um, we have a lot of things I wanted to chat about, but um, before we dive in, I have kind of a fun, or in, uh, it's interesting to me anyway, interesting question for you just in terms of your business and then kind of life right now. Okay, so he here's the question. Um, I know you guys have been in business it's over 15 years now, right? Yeah, right about there, yeah. Okay, so the question I have is what got you started? Like what made you decide, yeah, I'm going to start this business. And then what makes you continue to say, yeah, I'm going to continue this business now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's a good question for, for us. Shelly was doing some photography work outside Chicago in the wedding space. So it was kind of around, um, I had recently gotten my master's in educational leadership. I had looked at potentially becoming a principal. I was an elementary school teacher at the time and just didn't really like that. <laughs> it just didn't quite fit my personality and I wanted to be in the classroom. So I thought, well, I'll do something on the side. And I'd been a musician for a long time. So I had a lot of gear and Shelly had sort of, I guess somehow planted some sort of seed in my head. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that consciously seed, while you were sleeping <laughs> yeah something i don't know it just that combined with just a significant amount of naivete i thought well uh, starting a dj business won't be that hard and um it, and so i started one and then um we caught a few lucky breaks and we sort of moved forward and we added photography a few years later and we opened up a studio and we did all those things and then what keeps it going i guess is just the idea that we like it and weddings are a really fun space to be in once once it, you know it's like an acquired taste i think from an event standpoint and yeah. once you're there it's a lot of fun so yeah i'm gonna add to the start of our business story because there's like i don't know there's just some fun things that happened at the beginning i was i've always been a photographer like since i was in high school so i kind of fell into weddings after college as a way to 
make money and do what I love. And I just became really passionate about weddings. And I was working for other studios and trying to start my own business. And um, I was like, okay, my friends are coming over today. We're going to talk about me shooting their wedding. I hadn't done a lot of weddings on my own yet. And I said that in the morning. And when I came home from my, like we came home from our day jobs and Tyler had like, like literally created a business and a contract <laughs> like he was like I think I want to DJ their wedding and I'm gonna pitch it to them and I was like okay <laughs> and then <I> hired him <laughs> and um he had a couple of other weddings in between the time we met and that 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 first wedding we did together but anyways just kind of a cute story about how <laughs> Tyler is like the true story of just falling into the industry yeah. I mean, you, you got excited, then you just went for it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Blind and dumb. just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, maybe we're all kind of blind and dumb to some yeah. <laughs> Not a terrible place to be, actually. <laughs> hey, it, it, it drives you sometimes, right? Like, just that, um, yeah, that naivete, right? Like, like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> I think maybe it's also a young thing, too. <laughs> like, yeah, you that's a good point. It that changes a little bit perhaps we we lose a little bit of that but um okay cool i love it um because we we obviously will we'll be sharing a fun little bio about you guys but i thought just a little taste from your end on um the beginning and the now um is is yeah. funny here okay so this is this is my second question and then we'll dive into the into the heavy um so what's the best part and the worst part about life in covid for you guys Mm -hmm. that's a good question you have some ideas I mean the best part for me is like my life is a lot more even now when you work in the events industry like there's a lot of like on the go and things change all the time uh, your schedule and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day can really shift so I have a lot more uh, time to like work out and cook and like do things that like I normally just Put to the wayside so that's kind of what i like about quarantine life what's yeah. the worst part the worst part <laughs> sitting <laughs> she's like sitting next to me <laughs> sitting next to you all the time no, just <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean well for on a per very personal level most of my family lives in the mid or all of my family lives in the midwest so it's hard to being here in California, like I've always taken solace in the fact that I could just hop on a plane whenever I wanted to see them and I can't do that right now. So. Right. That's gotta be rough for you guys. I know with the, you know, you, you re re I'm going to say recently moved, but you know, recently moved and that's, I can't imagine that has, that has to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's a, I, it's hard. Honestly, there, there are opportunities, which is great. I mean, that's kind of nice. Like I feel like, um, it's fun to kind of recognize different opportunities and just look at context in life. But that's a minor thing. Honestly, for me, it's pretty much sucked. I hate it. <laughs> I'm not the type of person that likes being inside. Um, I definitely like having a routine where I need to be governed by being places at certain times. It, it's mm -hmm. really beneficial to, to the way that I work and that's completely gone. So there's been a lot of work. Actually, I think more work because of this. I mean, I think in general, it's pretty easy to just wake up and work until you go to bed when you're in quarantine yeah. and that can catch up to you. Um, so there's good, good opportunities, which is nice. But for me, like it's been pretty terrible <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And uh, I'm pretty ready for, for all of it to change, but also, um, you know, I think that we, I'm proud of how diligent we've been and how safe we've been. And I think that's paying off and in just the fact that we have a, general level of comfort and less anxiety about it just because we've we've been really strict and good about it yeah so. yeah and that's great I mean I think we all have to do our part right um especially just given everything um which I guess is a good segue into the the new world we live in now right and the new weddings that we're all doing and seeing and then you know as a couple it's like like figuring out kind of what what these different types of weddings are and what they mean and how to do them and 
how even to kind of wrap your head around some of it, I think is, is hard. So we've been trying to sort of help with that. And I, in terms of for you guys, like my question really is just as, you know, as couples start to think about, you know, these new ways of getting married, whether that be virtual, whether that be micro, whether that be some kind of hybrid, you know, like what's something important that, you know, you think they need to keep in mind when it comes to music or photography or live stream, which is a big part of what you're doing now in terms of either planning or logistics or, or what have you, because I know you guys have been working hard at a bunch of events and they're not all easy. And I think that's, I'm, gonna, I'm sort of diving into your question here, but I think that's one thing, at least I think that it's a hard thing for people to realize. But what do you think something is, you know, that you would think like is the important thing that they need to keep in mind as they're sort of thinking through or thinking about doing a different alternative kind of wedding? Um, well, I think there's, there's a lot for people, especially if they're trying to have something small and in person, like it's super important to be flexible right now because things change. So quick. it's really hard to plan ahead right now. So getting married in 2020, like you've got to plan like weeks in advance, not months or even years like we're used to in the industry. Right. Um, and so that's that's like one big one just be flexible and be ready to change and keep communicating with your vendors and make sure they're able to change if you need to change locations or whatever um because places are literally shutting down that were open before and vice versa so um and are you willing to go to a, an online event or a virtual event you know is is that a possibility if you want to move forward uh, with your wedding this year so are you finding that people are struggling with that like just the the being flexible like just having a hard time being flexible i think people are being a lot more flexible i mean i think that's a positive thing that's come out of this like even for couples that have had to postpone for 21 right um like just let's all be flexible and we can make this work you know yeah that's wonderful yeah. I take, I take that a step further and just say like, not just flexible, but also like, you know, hate to be cliche, but like lemon made out of lemon situation. Um, the couples that we're working with that are like seeing this is kind of an interesting and cool option mm -hmm. are the ones who are having the best experience. Yeah. And then the couples who are still trying to cram in those 120 people are really putting everybody in a, a really rough spot. And so uh, rules are different from county to county and we you know we're in san francisco and chicago and san diego so we've got kind of this different view of different places and how they're responding but even within those markets there are tons of different counties that have different rules so we're having to jump on calls and we're finding many times that uh that the rules are just so different and so gray and just i mean i would say like honestly the couples who are trying to take advantage of those things are really struggling at the end yeah. because vendors are starting to be like wait a minute and you know planners that are kind of trying to like facilitate it's very difficult for planners right now because they've got couples who want to pull something off they've got vendors and other people saying wait a minute yeah it's even legal yeah. and they're navigating that space so it's very difficult and i would just say if people just embrace a smaller concept keep everybody safe and make the best of some kind of like hybrid or virtual experience, if you really want to go through with your wedding, there are a lot of really, really fun and cool things that people will talk about for the next 20 or 30 years. You just have to embrace it too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a hard, sometimes it's, it's like a frame of mind thing, right? Like you just have to be able to understand that things that it's different and it different isn't bad. Like right. different can be awesome. Um, which like, I know, I know you guys have done a bunch of events. So tell me what, what do you think is like the biggest benefit or the biggest like plus side thing of doing something that's a little different now? Like, what do you, you know, you're talking about the couples who are embracing it. Like, what do you think or not? What do you think, but what have they said they love about this new version of a wedding? Um, well, I think there's 
there's a lot of fear right now about in-person events. So when you adjust what that looks like and you make it a very micro version of what an in-person gathering normally looks like, and then you add the virtual and the online element, like you're creating a safe space as you know, as safe as you can for those in-person gathering. And then you're creating a space for, for your guests to you're eliminating that fear portion of it, which is what's so hard about moving forward with a wedding right now. So when you remove that fear portion of it, you can focus on like having an awesome event, um, which is what we're finding like couples that are doing actual, you know, celebrating play what we're, we've termed celebrate in place when they're doing something totally online or they have, you know, just a few people gathered in person and then everybody else online. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many emotions coming through. Um, and I don't think that can come through if there's still a fear element there. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I agree with that. And also the, there have definitely been couples. I mean, we've been lucky to work with a lot of people who are kind of, embracing this and, and it's kind of a spectrum right some people are really fully embracing it others are sort of in the middle most people are kind of in the middle but the people who are more on the side of a full sort of understanding of what's out there they're looking at things like you know well it was going to be hard for everybody to get to you know the wedding anyway and so now we're going to be able to include more people or they're making statements like to be honest you know there were 180 people invited. If I had my say, there'd be 40. Um, those are the types of situations that, you know, couples may take a step back. And yes, a big, large, amazing wedding is pretty much everybody's goal here. Um, but the, the idea that there are some elements of the wedding that were becoming tricky and stressful to clients that are actually removed because of this, I think people acknowledging those and and um, kind of using that to get excited about what's available to them. Um, it takes a lot, but there are people doing it. And again, those, those are the people who are having a really great time at their events. And we have seen from the emotional standpoint, we have absolutely seen more emotion in 2D than we ever saw in 3D. <laughs> I mean, for real, this, the ceremonies that are being conducted, I mean, the, the entire, the 200 screens are all crying. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a really, really cool, uh, you know, situation for people. people. They're just like, the guests are so grateful that they're able to be there and yeah. celebrate with the couple, even though, you know, we're in this weird time. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's like, that's the part that makes it special, right? It's, we are in a weird time. I think that's probably what elevates it too, right? And the fact that we, we can't see people and hug people and, you know, do the things we used to be able to do when you can be a part of something that's super happy like this, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing. Um, okay, so in terms of, you know, this kind of new virtual, online, hybrid, micro, whatever words you want to use for this, the, the new kind of alternative types of weddings, as, as people kind of dive into it, and I'm talking a little bit more about the DIY kind of couple here, but even, even for couples who are um, looking for help and they're just sort of starting to think about it, what's kind of an unexpected problem or something that they just don't even realize is necessary or something they need to do or something they need to think about or something that could happen um, with these types of events? Sorry, we've got a dog coming into the picture, but um, hi. <laughs> you want to say hi? Hey, bud. Um, cute. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I, I would say the tech, the tech element of things is so it's weird. We'll just talk about the streaming component, right? Obviously, zooming and when it comes to zooming, running a Zoom call does take a little bit of skill to produce it at a high level to because uh, you can spotlight things and you can on, you can honestly produce an experience for people if you kind of know what you're doing. So it is nice to have some sort of producer and host to a Zoom call, especially with a lot of, a lot of screens. The live streaming element is really, for me, the, been the, 
the hardest to get my head wrapped around. And you basically the tech goes from zero to 60, right? Zero is you can pull out your phone and stream to Facebook right there. Right. And then 60 is you bring in a camera, you bring in a computer, you test this that without going too far into the weeds on it. There's no 20. There's no 23. There's no 41. It is either zero or 60 in terms of the tech of live streaming at a high level. So it's either DIY or full professional. There's really no in between. So I would say that's the one thing that we would recommend is that if you, if you do do DIY, be ready for some of the limitations, but those not, may not be that bad. And it may be totally worth it to just throw an iPad on a stand and set it next to the, you know, next to the altar, or you might want somebody to come in and do it professionally, which again, that it's just, it's very hard to do that in between the professional elements pretty, um, from a tech standpoint, it's pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't doubt it. It's, it's why we brought you in. <laughs> so I don't have to do it. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's its own beast, right? Um, okay. So if, if someone was going to DIY this, right, if that made sense for them for whatever reason, right? What, is there something, is there a, a tip, a piece of advice you would give them to help make that just a little bit better or a little easier or any of the above? I don't know, do you have any tips? <laughs> I don't, I mean, practice, like do a, do a little yeah. bit of a test run. I think that's a good, that's a good start. Um, yeah. If you can do a test run, make sure you've got a good signal where you're going to have the ceremony, that kind of thing to, you know, just make sure that, you know, I, I, I would say like, again, like having, if you're going to have a Zoom call going at the same time, uh, have like dedicate a fa family or friend to help to be on the kind of the producer of sorts so they can help people with technical that are having technical issues and be the point person so you're not as concerned about that you're more focused on getting married yeah 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 right so important. Yeah. So and if you're gonna do if you're gonna stream to like a, a standard service that we all know like facebook or instagram i mean it's you know it's probably gonna fail like just be ready it's there's probably gonna be a problem um it doesn't mean that the problem is un or uh, something you can't get over. It might be something as simple frame drops or just, and, and you're back to normal within seconds, or it might be Facebook recognize the song that you walk down the aisle to and they shut you down permanently. Yeah. yeah. Those, those sorts of things are very, very possible. And so, you know, just know if you do DIY, like you're, you're sort of up against it. Um, but it's, it's doable again, if you're just sort of expl explaining to your guests, Hey, We'd love for you all to be there. Um, and, you know, we're going to go ahead and just put this on our Facebook page or on our Instagram. And we're hoping it holds. And we hope you guys enjoy it and get a chance to see it and, and then cross your fingers. And, um, uh, but if, it's, if you're going to like do a full invite and you're going to technically invite people to your virtual wedding, then you need to have professionals take care of it. Yeah. Sure. And then honestly, then you don't have to deal with it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. it's then it's all in someone else's hands. It's off your shoulders. And yeah. how nice is that? <laughs> yeah. Especially for a couple. Yeah. <laughs> right? So important. Um, then they can just enjoy, enjoy all the moments, which we all want for them. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So we were talking about the idea of, you know, these new weddings, people embracing them and, you know, just accepting that, you know, it is a different, it is a different kind of thing, but different, different can be really cool. What do you guys see, you know, like if you had a crystal ball, right, um, and you were, you know, omniscient or whatever, um, if you could imagine like the future, what do you see happening for weddings, both, you know, during COVID, like let's say next year, but even maybe after COVID that you think, you know, given kind of where we are now with weddings, like what do you see in the future? Well, I think there are certain cultures that already pre-COVID like embraced the streaming element to be able to include people from around the world into their events. Like I, I see these hybrid events of, you know, people not spending an arm and a leg to travel to each and every wedding they're invited to, but still being able to join virtually. I think that's a really great option because, um, you know, some people have a lot of disposable income for that and others don't so 
Um, and you know, weddings, right? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Being able to, you know, pick and choose like which weddings you go to every year might be uh, like actually show up in person too might be a cool option. So yeah. um, I think that's a positive to come out of this. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't necessarily think it's going to go anywhere. And I, like I have to mention an episode of The Office where they try to do like a virtual party and there's all these technical difficulties. And what's funny about that is people were thinking about this concept well before COVID-19, mm -hmm. especially in corporate. Um, they, as a matter of fact, corporate events, you know, as you well know, are, are likely, they're adjusting to this much, much easier. Right. And it's because this concept isn't that foreign. Right. And so I think that when this is all said and done and everything is back to, you know, normal, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think the, the, I don't, I don't think streaming or virtual options as add-on options are ever going anywhere. Yeah. I think those will be around forever. And so, you know, if there's other companies that are looking to get into this space, other people looking to do that, I mean, my recommendation is to like jump completely in because, you know, yes, people say Zoom fatigue and yeah, people are really tired of this lifestyle, but the reality is it's actually quite convenient for people and it's safe, you know, regardless of what happens, there's still going to be people who are a little nervous, whether it's because of the age bracket they're in, or, um, you know, maybe there's an autoimmune disorder, there, there's those things are always going to be around. And so if you have relatives that have those concerns, virtual options are excellent. And we had somebody, you know, book book a stream of, of their wedding back in Chicago, and, and we got everything ready. And we, we were sort of like coming to the end and trying to figure out how many people were going to be watching it. And that they had they let us know this is really only for four people. The you know the grant like now more people did watch it because they had that option but the idea that they found it completely appropriate to you know spend the money on a virtual event just for a couple of loved ones I think tells you everything you need to know that that not the shelter in place stuff that will eventually fade out right but the hybrid element of this is I don't believe going anywhere after COVID yeah yeah I mean I think it it provides a lot of opportunity um, to just either have more people or like you said, like people who, you know, aren't going to travel or who are immunocompromised or what have you, right? There, it gives people another option. Mm -hmm. I think that is, um, you know, it's an opportunity to include people in a way that you couldn't before necessarily or, or even now, right? Given yeah. COVID. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's safe, which yeah. I think is so important, which leads me to my other question, which, you know, we were, you were talking about it earlier, the Chicago, San Diego, San Francisco Bay Area. And I think if anyone's been reading news, right, there's been all these articles coming out about these sort of illegal and or unsafe weddings. And I know I've heard of things from other vendors as well. Um, I guess the question I have really is, I'm a big proponent of safety. And I think people really need to be paying attention to sort of what's, what people are doing and not do those things. But I also think it's, uh, it, you rely a little bit on your team, right? And so what do you think, you know, couples should ask or expect from their DJ, from their photographer, you know, to help keep people safe at these events? And like, what do you think is kind of a red flag? Because I think also at this point, depending on kind of how you know as a company right how you take this level of safe safety and what you're doing on your end from a procedure standpoint like it it could be caused to go in a different direction to some degree and so I, i'm curious in in your eyes you know from your point of view what you think you know people should be knowledgeable about or or know about as they're diving into these in person, even if it's small, you know, an in person wedding. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a red, like th the red flag to me is numbers. Um, and it, it varies from place to place. But, you know, this may not be comfortable for everybody to hear, but the reality is look, if, if you're shoving 50 people in one room and 50 people in another room, like that's probably not safe. Yeah. Um, no matter what steps are being taken. And so for, for us, there's a lot of different, you know, kind of 
ideas behind this and a lot of things, steps that are being taken. And so I would just say like from a couple perspective, if you're, if you're working with high end vendors, you need to probably be prepared for two things. One of them is they might have some questions and you and your planner and everybody involved need to be prepared to honestly answer those questions, especially venues. Um, right now, venues are not wanting to give deposits back. And so it's clouding their judgment a little bit to be, to be perfectly honest. And because of that, everybody's kind of in this space where, well, the venue said it was okay. Right. If you've got a high-end photographer or a high-end DJ, they don't really care what the venue says because they don't necessarily have to have this event. You know, it, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. And so don't, don't be alarmed if your DJ has questions and take the time to answer those questions because they need to make sure that themselves or their team are safe. And there are safe ways to do these things. Yep. Um, and so just communicating about those is really important. Um, and then also just understand that high-end vendors will walk. They will absolutely, it's in their contract, it's in our contract. If you're putting one of our people in a really bad situation, we're gone. Yeah. Um, and happy to give your money back and you can just go find somebody else. So if you're dealing with high-end vendors, you've got to be prepared to communicate. And if you're trying to, you know, stick 100 people in a place where there really shouldn't be 100 people, you probably need to be prepared for the vendors to push back a little bit. And if you communicate effectively and a lot of measures are in place and you've got a good team and there's trust there, right. it's doable, but the numbers are the red flag. And if, you know, if you're still trying to have that, you're holding on to that 120 person wedding and, you know, we're seeing couples that are like really on, on, on almost, almost like it's like their identity. Like I'm not going to let this, you know, we're going to have this wedding hell or high water. We're so committed to it. And it's like, that is honorable. Right. except that you are putting people in danger. Right. Like right. that's a great personality skill set to have if you're going for a promotion at work. That <laughs> is not a skill set to have when you're putting people and their families in harm's way. So be prepared to communicate um, and also be prepared if you're working with good vendors, they may tell you it's not going to happen. And you need to be okay with that. You need to have a plan B and, and you know, and maybe just reassess the situation. You are. Um, you are potentially creating a super spreader event that's going to be on the front page of the newspaper. Yeah. That's what, that's where weddings are right now. And so just be prepared, understand those are your consequences. And I think, you know, with all of that being said, there are decisions that can be made amongst a group of professionals and adults. Um, just be, be ready to have, comp, you know, dialogue around those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think um, no one wants to be that front page news, right? Like right. the SF Chronicle, right? Our or, motto is be a hero, not a headline. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's true, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you don't want, well, outside of the fact that you don't want people to get sick, because nobody wants their people, Right. I mean. You, know? I, you also don't want that. Um, you don't want to be the, the, the talking point at the water cooler, right? Or I guess there's no water coolers now, but you know, the, the Zoom call, the, the talking yeah. point at the Zoom call. You get a water cooler background for your Zoom. <laughs> we've had a lot of conversations with other vendors. We've, we've, I'll be the first to admit, we lucked into this virtual thing. We were well positioned for it right before all of this happened. And we jumped in and because of that, we've had lots of great conversations with other vendors, whether they're other DJ companies, photographers, videographers, about what we're doing and how it may or may not make sense. Um, it, it's seeming to me like the conversations are generally around this idea of what's legal, right? So it starts out by saying, well, if the, you know, the city of Chicago or the city of San Francisco says this, then this is what we're going to do. But we very early on in talking to these other vendors said, now pose, an, now pose yourself another question. At some point in this planning process, it's very possible that the couple is going to wake up in the middle of the night and start talking about their wedding. And they're going to ask themselves, what if we actually harm somebody in our family? Yep. That is a very real question, regardless of what, you know, the city of Schaumburg, Illinois says about how many people can be in a space. That's a real conversation that couples are going to have. And so build something around that and build the, this virtual experience, you know, which 
was so easy for people to poo poo at the beginning. Right. And now people are like, okay, I, it's not going anywhere. It's not exactly what we wanted. That, that's how I was able to really talk to people and get them in a headspace where they may want to add these services into their own um, offerings because, because of that dialogue, not because new guidelines came out on the Thursday before a wedding. Like that's important, but what's more important is the actual questions that couples are having to ask themselves. Yeah, and I think like, you're, you know, I love your headline, the whole um, be a hero, not a headline, but uh, I have one, which is like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, yeah. Like, in some of these cases, like even here in the Bay, right? Like there are different rules in different counties. So you can have something this big here, but this small here. And like, how did that work when you're traveling to different, you know, people are coming from different counties and going to different counties. It's just, I think people have to be really conscious of the idea that just that these numbers are numbers to help guide you, but really you gotta be thinking like three steps more than that, right? And, and taking the precautions you need to be partaking to protect your family, to mm -hmm. protect the people you love, to protect the community, right? To com protect the dude that you don't even know down the street, right? Because it's, it's people's lives we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And that's not something to play around with. Um, okay, so I, I, had a, I had a question for you. I didn't want to interrupt you earlier. You know, when you were talking about um, working with high-end vendors, right? And I do think, uh, there are standards, right, that we all have. What if you're working with somebody who's maybe not so high end? And if you're in a situation where, like, you know, you as a couple, like, maybe don't know what you imagine they should be doing, but is there, is there anything that you're seeing or you've heard of or whatever in your realms where you feel like, oh God, like if, if I was a couple and that they were doing that or not doing this, or saying this or not saying this or whatever, when it comes to these safety restrictions, is there anything that comes to mind that is kind of like red flag in that way from a couple perspective, working with somebody who's maybe not taking the steps they should be taking to ensure people's safety? And it's okay if you haven't, I just thought I'd ask the question. Um, well, I think people need to be like very openly communicating as much as they can about all the safety precautions the couple is taking and the like vendors like if there are specific safety precautions that you should be taking like what what are you doing and um keeping those lines of communication communication clear i think couples are going to find some vendors are more comfortable than others going to in-person events right now so you know, they're going to know as they start talking to them, you know, we have clients reaching out, say, like, kind of like telling us like, hey, we're moving forward. And some of those clients are like, taking into consideration, like, hey, we originally booked our, like, you know, they booked pre COVID, they're still wanting to have a wedding in October. Are you comfortable being there? Like, that's like, as a vendor, that feels really good when couples like consider like that we still want to work with the same team of vendors that we booked like are you comfortable doing that like we're in you know they're including you in the conversation like that's amazing like that's like top notch like that's the best thing you can do yeah. um because if you have a vendor that's not comfortable like do you consider something else like do you consider another option maybe it's postponing yep I, you know i don't know i don't know if that answered your question <laughs> Well, no, I think, I, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I was just going to say, like, I think in terms of high end, maybe that's not necessarily a, the uh, distinction um, because there are definitely high end. I mean, you know, just, you know, we're all part of like wedding industry conversations, whether that be via these kinds of things or, you know, Facebook or whatnot. A lot of high end vendors taking very sketchy stances on this, to be honest. So high end is probably not the best way how to about, do How about professional? Just like right. So yeah, I mean, if you like, if you're yeah, if you book like a, um, you know, if you book a service that is maybe new and a little hungrier is probably the, the right way to put it. Then they may be more willing to take some of those risks, which 
at the end of the day, is that a good thing? Is that, I mean, right. so yeah, that's, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic, but to, to Shelly's point, like communication is just key. It's the most important thing and being willing to adapt communication and flexibility are really gonna, you know, if you, if you are going to end up having a wedding that, that, you know, moving forward with everything, then those two things are key no matter, no matter whether you have a, somebody you booked off Craigslist or, you know, somebody that's, you know, part of that sort of higher end echelon. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, and I honestly, like, regardless of COVID, those two things are real important normally anyway. I right. think. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe flexibility is a little less, like you can be a little less flexible, but I think <laughs> communication, right. It's, yeah. it's oh so important. Uh, when it comes to any sort of, any relationship, I guess. I was going to say any vendor-client relationship, but any relationship, really. Yeah. Um, okay, enough of the heavy. Um, is there any anything else, before I ask my, my, um, my last random fun question, um, that you guys just want to share? Just either about, like, these new ways to wed or something you've been thinking about when it comes to safety or anything. I mean, I just... I think it's helpful to hear a different perspective. I don't know anything extra on your end. Well, I just, I think that people like like as 2020 keeps moving on and things are not really changing that much, we're getting worse in some areas. Yeah. Better in some areas too. Um, you know, people, they still want to have a wedding and they still want to get married. So what is like, just, you know, be, be open to what that looks like. You can still get married now and, you know, maybe you do postpone the big celebration to way down the road. Like, that's okay. Like, but what does your small wedding look like now, whether it's online or whether it's in person, like, it's okay to have a wedding now and have it look a little bit different than what we knew weddings looked like pre COVID because, you know, it's probably not going to look the same for a really long time. So just be open and you can still get married and have like a, a joyous celebration. You just have to shift your mindset a little bit. Yeah. Be open, be flexible and communicate people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the moral of today's story. Okay, um, last question. Um, what's something that you're watching, reading, cooking, doing, whatever, whatever the, the ad adjective, verb? Oh my God. Help, help, help me, educational person. <laughs> the, the thing you're doing Man, right now, you, no. that's a happy thing for you that you would recommend for someone else. A distraction. I watch too much TV. <laughs> we recently watched together All We Gone in the Dark, uh, which is an HBO. So Very uplifting documentary. Not uplifting <laughs> at all. <laughs> but it's super interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading a lot. I think that that's helping. Anything um, in particular that you. I, like, I'm a big self help reader. So, like, I'm reading Alan Watts right now just because it's one of those authors that I've never um, dabbled in. And that's been really interesting to me. Um, and then I, I'm, I'm reading a book called Cloud, Cloud Atlas. It's like a fictional book. It's kind of interesting. It's got a lot of different, it's a really interesting thing where all these different stories tie together. It's like a bunch of short stories and each short story is written in a different genre. So it's like a, huh. a very good read. Um, kind of a, a hard read, but at this like in certain areas, but then an easier read. So, um, but it's yeah, reading and then and then like yeah, trying to like you know get it get a use out of our Nintendo Switch to trying to play play some video games. That's been fun. We've got a ten year old, and that helps that helps a a little bit. So yeah, yeah. I will say like I've been cooking a lot since quarantine, yeah. but there's also this really cool opportunity to uh, like a bunch of caterers in the area are offering like meal delivery, which yeah. is, it's kind of like a nice little break every once in a while to yeah. take advantage of that because they have like bandwidth to provide these amazing meals to me at my house. Like, yes, please. Yeah. If you're in a market <laughs> so. with caterers, check it, check it out. Cause they're kind of shifting their business to deliveries. And so you have these like 
incredible meals delivered to your house and you're supporting these really great businesses. And then that just made me think of one more thing. DJs um, have really taken to the live stream thing and really, really, really good DJs. Yeah. So you would have to wait in line for three hours to get in the door for DJing like every night, DJing every night at seven o'clock. So you're not up till four in the morning to, to check them out. Um, DJ head, shortcut head is to Twitch. go head to Twitch <laughs> and see all the DJs performing because it's amazing. You'll never, ever get this experience again. If this, if, if it gets shut down or if it, if it starts going, if they start going back into the clubs, you're just not going to see it. So it's a really cool opportunity to see some of the best in the world doing what they do. That is cool. Good tip. Good yeah. tip. I like it. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much. First of all, just for coming on here, for sharing your, your thoughts, your um, tips, your advice for people as they're sort of diving into this new world of weddings. Um, and thanks for hanging out with me for a yeah, little while. Thanks, thanks Jamie. Appreciate it's always it. Always good to see you. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye. Oh, Bye. See ya. So that was fun. And I hope you learned a lot too. If you have any questions, follow-up questions for myself or Tyler or Shelly, please let us know in a comment below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please like it. Give us some thumbs up. You can check out our other videos for even more wedding planning tips. And please hit subscribe so you can get access to all the new ones. And if you live in the Bay Area, definitely check out Let's I Do This, our virtual and intimate wedding packages that make it easy to get married now. Tyler and Shelly are a part of it, as obviously am I. And of course, if you're looking through help through the entire wedding planning process, please check out Passport to Joy, my online course. You can find all the links for everything below because you deserve to enjoy your engagement, no matter what your budget is, and even in the middle of a pandemic. Thanks so much for being here, and I'll see you next time. Bye.